you can reverse engineer what the journey needs to look like in order for them to like authentically and confidently share that success story. And that's what it's all about. So we, this whole journey mapping, we map it so we can see where you are, right? But then when we actually, we transform into what we call a kinetic pathway. So customer journey to us is the past. A kinetic pathway is the future. That's the water slide. So you're on a water slide and there's plenty of water and you're going. And even if you have to go up over a hill, there's enough momentum to keep you going. That's what your journey needs to look like. But we've all been on that water slide where there's not quite enough water and you're like, ah, that hurt. It didn't feel good. You get stuck, right? And so that's what we want to avoid. We want to avoid the water slide without enough water, which is what most journeys are. Welcome to the e-commerce marketing podcast, the highly rated digital marketing podcast that provides weekly digital marketing tips and strategies from some of the world's top digital marketers and e-commerce entrepreneurs that will help you take your digital marketing to the next level. Sit back and enjoy this power packed episode hosted by Arlen Robinson, who is an e-commerce entrepreneur and digital marketing expert with over 20 years of experience. Hey, e-commerce marketing podcast listener. Are you looking to increase traffic and sales to your website? You can do this by launching your own affiliate program. Just visit getosi.com and sign up for a free trial today. That's getosi.com. Now get ready to hear from your e-commerce marketing expert of the week as they drill down to give you details on marketing strategies that can help grow your business. Welcome back to the e-commerce marketing podcast, everyone. My name is Arlen and I'm your host. And today we are joined by a special guest, Jason Friedman, who is a serial entrepreneur who turned his passion for theater into a blueprint for business success. Uh, Today, he acts as the CEO of CX Formula, uh, where Jason has revolutionized customer experience. Uh, where he applies storytelling and psychology to help companies across industries from retail giants to financial institutions uh, achieve explosive growth. Um, He's been recognized by Ernst & Young as Entrepreneur of the Year and leading his company to the Inc. 5000 list multiple times. Uh, Jason's unique approach has made a significant impact Um, beyond his professional accolades. he's, He's a proud dad and dog lover. And so today you better get ready for insights on elevating e-commerce through exceptional customer experiences. Welcome to the podcast, Jason. Hey, Arlen. Thanks for having me, man. Super excited to be with you. Yeah. And thank you for joining. We really appreciate you coming on and I'm super excited to talk to you. And, uh, you know, today, as I mentioned, we're going to be diving into customer experience, which is very important. Um, Whether you're an e-commerce brand and you're selling online or, you know, you have any web presence. I think the customer customer experience is is super important. So we're going to dive into that. Um, but before we do, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your background and you know how you specifically got into what you're doing today? Yeah, man. Thanks for um, thanks for that question. I you know my background is a little bit crazy. Uh, I started out in theater, right? So as a young okay. kid, um, I call myself a theater nerd, right? I was a, a lighting guy, a scenery guy. Like I built sets, designed lights, did all that growing up, and um, one thing led to another, and I found myself as a rock and roll roadie. I toured okay. with uh, Fleetwood Mac, with Peter Gabriel, wow. Rush, and then I went on to some more legit theater, like you know Broadway style, like Fiddler on the Roof, Man of La Mancha, Jesus Christ Superstar. And it was one of those um, kind of like out of body experiences, like it's Mr. Miyagi. You're waxing on, you're waxing off, you're painting the fence, and all of a sudden at the end of the rainbow, you have these skills that you didn't realize you were building over the years, and that mm-hmm. skill was about engaging your customer and like you think about it you go to a rock concert and people get there like hours early to kind of get in the mood and they're playing the songs and they're drinking and they're eating food and they're hanging out with their buddies and then they go in and they like listen to more of the music and they just everything that was going on in their life falls away and they are in the zone right and like like they can't they can't think of anything else they're just so into it and at the end they're roaring they're screaming they're clapping and they, they go home still singing the songs and doing the things. And, and then the next day they tell everybody that they know about it. Like that, yeah. that I learned how to, there's a formula for that. Like that doesn't happen by accident. Like every time mm-hmm. you go to a theater show or a, a, a concert or whatever, those are the kinds of experiences that you have. And so what we've mm-hmm. done over the years is working with big brands 
and the littlest brands is take this formula and let you kind of have this operating system in your business that allows you to wow your customers consistently um, to a point where they have such a great experience that they want to tell other people about it, that they buy more products, that they return over and over again for your subscriptions. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's magical. Right. And so, yeah. Yeah, that's that's my that's my jam, man. That's what we've been doing for the last thirty years. I date myself, I know. Wow. And uh, yeah, we just we love making it better. Okay, that's that's awesome. Good stuff. Yeah, that's a pretty uh, unique background that you have, going from the theater to you know working on uh, with lighting and stage setup for some some really major bands, yeah. and uh, you know getting into working with customers today. So um, yeah, I, I get that. I can see how you know, doing what you did then with the theater and the setup and everything, it's, you're, you're, you're kind of, you're crafting, you know, an environment for the customer and um, it's just on a different scale. Totally. Um, and so when you apply that, uh, you know, to an e-commerce business, you know, you're really still crafting an environment. It's just for the web. So um, yeah. I can imagine your experience has helped. You know, like whatever your, your e-commerce product is, right. If it's digital or if it's physical, it doesn't really matter what the product is, right. What happens is yeah. like there's there's the there's the sales process, there's the receiving it process, and then there's the using it process. And when you really yeah. think through who those customers are, what they really need and what they really want, and you start to craft the journey. Like think about mm -hmm. Apple, right? Like you get that iPhone box in the mail and you're like, wow, mm -hmm. like the box, the packaging, the unboxing isn't an experience in and of itself, mm -hmm. separate from yeah. using the device. So like we try yeah. and help brands, businesses, entrepreneurs, e-commerce experts, how do you figure out, how do you really like get to that journey that's going to create those, those moments that people are like so excited, so happy, so fulfilled mm -hmm. from that, that they can't help but to tell other people about it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I'm glad you mentioned that because that's kind of where I want to start with this whole customer experience. You mentioned customer journey and, you know, in your field and, in marketing circles, the, the term is, you know, journey mapping, yep. you know, mapping every single experience that the end customer has with your brand from the second they come to your website to, like you said, in the case of Apple, if you were to purchase an Apple product to the, you know, to the minute that they receive the package mm -hmm. and they start opening it, that whole uh, journey needs to kind of be mapped out in a way, you know, so that you can get things correct. And so, for an e-commerce brand, you know, how, how important is that? And what are some things that a brand can do to enhance that whole experience through that journey? Yeah, thank you. It's, I mean, it's a great question. Let, I want to just back up for one second, just so that we're all on the same page. So what I, sure. one of the things that you learn in, in journeys and customer experiences, expectations are everything, right? Yeah. And so I want, to, I want to set an expectation of what does experience even mean? Right. And so mm -hmm. we talk about it. it's a big word, right? Experience is not actually something you do. Experience is something that your customer has. It's not mm -hmm. the cause, it's the effect. And the cause right. is all the things that you do along their experience with you. That's what has them feel a certain way. So experience is how people feel about their interactions with your brand. Okay, with mm -hmm. your products, with your service, with your team, with your you know, customer support, with your website, everything. Okay. And so as you start to think about this journey, like you're right, we need to map it. And so what does that mean? It means like literally going through every touch point, every moment that you have and like documenting it, like drawing a picture, po putting post-its on the wall, right? We have a process that we use doing it that way. And, mm -hmm. and what, I love what you said, like you got to start like b before they meet you, right? Like at that website, but I even want you to go back a little further, right? I want you okay. to go back when a customer identifies that they have a problem or that mm -hmm. something that they, they want something that you might have. Because that whole process of them researching and trying to find you, that's an area where you can have conflict even before they get to your website. So for all sure. of you listening, like, I want you to go back a little further, like figure out who that customer, who that avatar, who that persona is. And then I want you to go further back in their journey. Like what was the trigger that got them to need your product, your service, your, your e-commerce, whatever it is, like, what is that? Okay. And then I want you to go beyond the using it, beyond buying it, beyond using it. I want you to go to that part where they're actually talking about it when they're leaving the review. And I want you to think through mm -hmm. that whole thing. And 
do they have another problem that surfaces where you now might have an opportunity to give them a, 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 another sale, right? There's another product or service or thing that you might have. So when you map this out, you're gonna go from moment by moment. Now, here's where everybody gets it wrong. They do it from the, the viewpoint, the vantage point of the company, the manufacturer, the e-commerce, you know, the guy that has the product, right? I want you to do it opposite. I want you to do it from the glasses, looking through the glasses of your customer. So if you mm -hmm. were to do that, how do you do that? So we teach a, a theater trick, right? So my, my theater geekness, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to pretend you're like Matthew McConaughey and you're going to actually get into character. You're going to play your customer in this feature film and you have to know everything about this person. Like what stresses them out? What are they feeling right now? What are they thinking? What's, what, is, what have they tried before that didn't work that gets them to have some reservations or some concern about your product? Like I want you to really get inside their head so that if you had to be Matthew and get on stage and have millions of people watching you, believing that you're actually that person, what are those things, right? And so when you start to get into the, the mind of the customer that way, you start to see things very differently. And so as yeah. you're mapping that journey, you're doing it from that perspective. So for example, right. it's I'm receiving an email, not I'm sending an email. The company would be sending, mm -hmm. The, the customer would be receiving. Hey there, fellow entrepreneurs and B2B marketers. Before we dive back into the conversation, let me introduce you to a game changer in the lead generation arena, Lead Feeder. Now we all know the struggle of identifying those elusive website visitors and turning them into valuable leads, but what if I told you there's a tool that not only promises but delivers on supercharging your lead generation and sales efforts. Enter Lead Feeder. Imagine having the power to identify companies visiting your website, track their behavior in real time, and seamlessly integrate it all with your CRM. Lead Feeder is not just a tool, it's your secret weapon for efficient and targeted lead engagement. What sets Lead Feeder apart? It's the ability to provide detailed insights into customer behavior helping your sales team prioritize efforts and close deals faster. With customizable notifications, lead scoring, and GDPR compliance, Lead Feeder is changing the game. Ready to revolutionize your approach to leads and deals? Head over to leadfeeder.com for your free demo today. That's L-E-A-D-F-E-E-D-E-R.com. Don't miss out on the future of successful lead generation with Lead Feeder. And so mm -hmm. what I recommend you do is you go through literally every step on the journey and list out everything they do. Just start there, get it all down. And then from there, we expand it. I want you to take each of the steps. I want you to ask, okay, so they're doing this, but what were they thinking and expecting in that moment? And then I want you to think, what are they using in that moment? Like, are they using a, a website or a phone or a computer or a, a pet, like whatever, what are they using? Who, mm -hmm. if anyone, are they interacting with? And the who could be a chatbot, right? That's a who these days, right? So whatever that is, could be AI, could be, you know, whatever, I'm sure we'll talk more about that. And then ultimately, how are they feeling at each of these mm -hmm. steps? And what mm -hmm. you're going to notice, this is textbook, this happens all the time, is it's a roller coaster ride of emotions. It's a roller right. coaster ride of expectations. And when we aren't proactively setting and managing those expectations, we're letting them down or they are being let down over and over again. Because here's the thing, mm -hmm. people have an expectation whether or not you set one, mm -hmm. right? And so we, it's, it's incumbent upon us if we want them to have a positive ex experience that, that we're setting and managing it. So at the minimum, they're getting what we say. And it's, right. they're like, oh yeah, you said this, you did this. Awesome, trust is being built. I trust you, mm -hmm. I trust you, I trust you. And the more you do that, then you have opportunities where you can pick certain key moments to give them a little more. You can do a little over delivery, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's a whole opportunity there. Now, yeah. the problem is we as businesses, as inventors, as product developers, as manufacturers, we generally speaking, make it hard to do business with us. We add all sorts of friction into the process that we didn't notice was there. We actually think most times that we're doing things to be helpful. And yet it's because it's easier for us or it makes sense to us. But when we shift the mm -hmm. script and we look at it like through 
the eyes of the customer were like, oh my God, it is hard to be my customer. It's really hard. <laughs> right. And so doing right. this kind of a process allows you to really simplify it and make it more fluid. Right. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, now, you had mentioned, of course, when you're doing this, you're going through this process. First off, you're figuring out your customer avatar, the ideal customer. Yep. Um, who is it that you're trying to attract? You know, I know in many cases, depending on the business, that avatar, there could be different forms of that avatar. For it may sure. not just be one specific avatar. Right. So, you know, in marketing, you know, when you're coming up with messaging, the whole push these days, is, you know, I've had other people on when we're talking about email marketing, it, it's always about personalization, you personalizing your marketing messages for those that specific avatar. Yeah. Now, if especially if you've got multiple avatars, how, how really important is that personalization? Do you really need to um, be that narrow in, you know, personalize, personalizing for each of those avatars? Or can you be a little bit broad and still effectively get people within your funnel? Yeah, so the answer is yes, both. Right. So, okay. um, it's, you know, so, so everything you said, I a hundred percent agree with, right. We call this process mass customization, right? Mm -hmm. How do we personalize things at scale? Right. Cause that's mm -hmm. what we have to do. And so what we do is we find the moments that matter the most that touch the avatar the most. And, and we, we, those are the moments that we have that are, I'll call it like tailored to avatar a versus B versus C. And so once you mm -hmm. map the journey, you do it by avatar. So what I would okay. recommend you do is once you figure out who all your avatars are, let's say you have five different avatars, avatar A, B, C, D, and E. And avatar A is the most common, like 60% of your audience is avatar A. Start there, mm -hmm. map the journey for avatar A. Now, after you've done that, now go back and say, okay, now I'm gonna put on avatar B glasses. What's different? Mm -hmm. Right. And then you'll find like there's not everything's different. Some things are different. And then you do the right. same thing for CDE. So you'll end up having mm -hmm. this journey that has a couple. It's, it's like a right. highway that you have an off ramp. You go on this road right. for a little while and then you get back on the main highway. Right. Gotcha. So that's kind of how it works. So you think of it like we think of it like lanes on a highway. Right. So yeah. you have the expressway that might be, you know, avatar A. And then you have like an off ramp that takes you on a slightly different road for avatar B, C, D, E. And that mm -hmm. is allowing them to have the experience that they need to get the results that they really want. Yeah. yeah, I get that. It's so it's, it's not just a one lane highway. You've, you, you've got to have different offshoots in order to meet the needs of your various Absolutely, customers. Absolutely. Right. But because see where I also see people getting stuck is on this idea of success. Right. So like the, mm -hmm. the someone buying your product is not the end result. I know it seems like that. And a lot of people say, yeah, like that's the win. I got the product sold. When someone yeah. buys your product, that is an intention. That is not a commitment, right? Mm -hmm. So they want it. They're like, okay, I'm going to try this. What they're looking at is what's the return policy? When can I re get my mm -hmm. refund? How does that work, right? So, so they're not 100% in. They have a back door. They have a way out. And, and, and they're not 100% sure they're going to use it. So when I talk mm -hmm. to people, it's like, I want you to really get clear on what that result is. We define the result. We call it the R4, right? We want customers who rave about the product and the experience they had with using it, who return to buy more products and services, who renew their memberships and their subscriptions, and who recruit other people. Not refer, right. recruit. They actively, like, mm -hmm. you know, affiliates, right? They go out there and they sell it because they believe in it. And the ones that mm -hmm. have better results are the ones that have actually probably used the product and really get behind it because it helped them. There was a transformation. It did something positive in their life when they share their journey, they share like maybe that they were worried in the beginning, this is the problem I have, and I wasn't sure, I've tried other things, but when I finally met Arlen, I learned, wow, like he has a different approach. So I took a leap of faith and every step along the way, we, he was just like showing me that they got my back, like it's helping me, it's, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. When you share those stories, when that is the result, not just buying the product, all of a sudden magical things start happening. You can reverse yeah. engineer what the journey needs to look like in order for them to like authentically and confidently share that success story. And that's what mm -hmm. it's all about. So we, yeah. this whole journey mapping, we map it so we can see where you are, right? But then when we actually, we transform it into what we call a kinetic pathway. So customer mm -hmm. journey to us is the past. A kinetic pathway is the future. That's the water slide. 
So you're on a water slide and there's plenty of water and you're going. And even if you have to go up over a hill, there's enough momentum to keep you going. That's what your journey gotcha. needs to look like. But we've gotcha. all been on that water slide where there's not quite enough water and you're like, ah, that hurt. It didn't feel yeah, good. Exactly. Stuck, right? Exactly. And so that's what we want to avoid. We want to avoid the water slide without enough water, which is what most mm -hmm. journeys are. So that's, mm -hmm. that's the, you know, that's the, that's how it works. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now let's say a brand has gone through the process of crafting this customer journey, coming up with what they feel is a, you know, a, a fairly ideal customer experience. Mm -hmm. They're not getting too much friction. They're getting sales. You know, everything is, seems to be going smoothly, but then of course, obviously, especially these days, um, feedback comes into play, yep. whether you're getting reviews from customers or, you know, you're just getting feedback. How much weight do you, does a brand need to put on this customer feedback when they're looking to, you know, evolve and change their whole customer experience? And, you know, if, if there is a, a fair amount of weight, you know, what are some, what are some kind of best practices as far as, you know, getting the right feedback? Yeah, and collecting man, it? that's a great question. So I think there's a lot of importance on feedback. I think it really does matter quite a bit. And so okay. there's a great statistic out there. It's a scary statistic. It says that for every one customer who bothers to complain, 26 mm -hmm. others remain silent. Okay. So think about that. But, you know, we have like a squeaky wheel client. They're complaining about something. You're like, oh, this guy's a pain in the neck, right? I'm just going to kind of like brush mm -hmm. that under the rug. Well, there could and likely are a lot of other people that have just not cared enough to share that feedback with you. So you mm -hmm. could have a, a, a pretty big problem systematically within your business, right? Like, like, so here's the thing about theater, right? The, we, the reason that I love theater for this is whenever, like, we script the show. And when we script the show, then we bring it to life and we, we rehearse all the things. It is a system that has been rehearsed and practiced. And with that system, we get the same laugh in the same spot every night. And the, the audience, even though it's a different audience, same people doing the show, they laugh. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Because we refine the system. So in your business, like if we're having people get stuck and have a complaint or have a, a friction point that's so much that they wanted to say something, you got to look at it. You can't ignore it. Now, that doesn't mean mm -hmm. you change your whole experience, but it does mean that you have to, you know, you have to shine the light, like get the magnifying glass out and say, look, is that, is that really an issue? And why yep. did that person have that issue? Right. right. So I would encourage like an investigation, so to speak, when that happens, like talk to the customer, find out what happened, like understand a little more. It might be the simplest things, right? It's not always mm. like, a, you know, when we talk about like fixing a journey or, or cleaning up a, a customer journey, it doesn't necessarily mean an overhaul. Sometimes yeah. there's just like, there's a little, if I'm here and I think this should have happened, so I'm going to complain because it didn't, but maybe it's not supposed to happen for three more steps. So mm. that just might mean that I have to give some better direction a little earlier on. It doesn't cost me yeah. anything to give a little better direction, right? Mm. Or it might mean that I've left my customers alone and they don't know what's going on and they're getting antsy. And so maybe I got to add a step in the journey. That's a communication step, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe I gave them too much information and I overwhelmed them and I created anxiety. I might have to reduce the amount of information I give in each amount in the dose. There might be too much of a dose of information. I may have to like, you know, bite size, yeah. chunk it out. Right. So right. like talking to them and understanding where people get stuck, it's a gold mine. It's a goldmine mm -hmm. of opportunity for your business. So okay. I think it's really important to do that and do it through their eyes. Get rid of the defensiveness. Like, because mm -hmm. it's hard, right? Like, it's your baby for a lot of us, right? It's our business. Yeah. We care. And when someone's like, it's not good, it hurts sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. You take it personally. And so I think the, the, there's, you know, the best advice I've ever received on this is like, confront the brutal facts. Be open mm -hmm. and listen with an open heart, open mind, and just hear and sit with it. And then ask, like, is, is there some truth in this? And if there is, yeah, but, like, thank them for sharing it. Like, it's going to make you better. It's going to make them better. They're going to get better results. So I would lean into it. That's the bottom line. And a lot of brands, I think, pull away and shy away from it. Because like you said, they, a lot of times they may be scared of having to do a whole overhaul. You know, they've, they've come up with, they feel, with what they feel is a solid customer experience, solid product. And, you know, spend a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of resources on it. And so a lot of times it's like, okay, 
you know, I'm, we're not changing anything, you know, this is yep. it, this is it, but it doesn't necessarily have to be like that. Just some small tweaks may be what you need. And, you know, you, you have to be open to me, to being able of to do course, that. Of course, of course. And, yeah. you know, like the other thing that you have to keep in mind is like the world's changing, right? Like, you know, if you're static, you're like, look, I did this, I made it, it was perfect. A year from now, it may not be perfect anymore. Needs change, customers evolve, the world evolves, right? And so mm -hmm. I think, Customer experience, again, your journey especially, it is not like, you know, we joke, like it's not a set it and forget it thing, right? The old commercial yeah. with the guy, you know, the Ronco food uh, dehydrator thing. It's like, it's not mm -hmm. that. What it has to be is a constant evolution. And so we're mm -hmm. always engaging with our customers. We're paying attention. And what I want people to do, like hopefully what you'll think about is, like, I want you to become obsessed with customers' results. And that j result is that they, they've actually used your product and got the outcome that they wanted, not just that they bought the product. I want them right. to get the outcome, right? And so start to think, like we put all of our money, most businesses on the customer acquisition side. We spend all of our money on strangers, trying to turn them into customers. And the ones who said yes, we just hope that the experience is good. We don't obsess and put budget, time, energy, resource, focus on getting them to that that holy land, right? To getting them to that outcome mm -hmm. that they really wanted. And so I, mm -hmm. I really want people to shift a little bit of their focus on that. Because when you do, when you shift your focus, that's what we help brands do, small businesses all day long. What ends up happening is you get a much higher percentage rate of success. And those people want to tell other people. And so what you've done is you, you have this operating system then that allows you to repeatedly, consistently deliver results. That means your ad spend, your, your, your cost goes down to get bigger results. St things mm -hmm. start to compound. And so when you do that, that's amazing. And if you have affiliate, an affiliate army and those affiliates are sending traffic to somebody to bring people in and those people are loving it, they're going to want to promote more for you next time because they make mm -hmm. more money. The whole ecosystem is improved because you focus your energy where it really needs to be focused. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. I definitely totally agree. Now, um, Jason, you've of course been at this for a long time. You've dealt with a lot of businesses. Yeah. You, I'm sure you've kind of seen it all and I'm sure you've seen, had some challenging experiences when it's come to customer, uh, experience. And I'm sure there's been some issues. If you can think of maybe one, um, issue, don't have to necessarily um, give any information about the client, but there's any specific issue that comes to mind and, um, that you encountered within the com within the e-commerce world, uh, what exactly did you do? How did you address it? Yeah, I mean, we we had this with uh, one of our one of our brands that we work with. Um, they are a I'll, I'll leave the, the brand name off, right? But um, sure. and they did everything right, so there's there's no reason really to except I didn't get their permission. So, um, but they um, they sell a product for dogs. Okay, it's a mm -hmm. um, uh, it's a it's a it's a paw balm. Okay, paw wax. And the idea is okay. to use it when your paws are cracked in the snow and the wet and in the summer when it's too hot and, and protect your paws, right? And mm -hmm. so they, they when, when I say these people love their customers, that is an understatement. They mm -hmm. adore their customers. They love dogs. They love pet parents. They want to make their lives better. And their whole reason for doing this is because they wanted to have them be able to live life with their pets safely. So if you want to go out in the snow and in the weather, your pets can go with you and it's safe. You want to go to the beach, it's safe. Like it's all about building the relationship between the pet parent and the pet. Like, so when you get mm -hmm. to know them, you're like, oh my God, like these people are the best humans I've ever met in my life, mm -hmm. right? So that's just who they are as people. And, right. um, and I think their marketing and their branding and their sales, their, their category killer, like it all shows it, right? Mm -hmm. Yet stuff still goes wrong, right? So mm -hmm. one of their partners, uh, they got some containers that, that these were went, that the product is in and mm -hmm. uh, they were shipped out. And um, in some of the cases, the lids came off, mm -hmm. right? And they were, it was a mess, right? Cause the, yeah, the bombs everywhere. And you know, right. it happened in warm places where it would melt and get gooey and nasty. It happened in cold places mm -hmm. where it wasn't as messy, but it was just annoying, right? And right, this happened right. and it was, somewhat of a big deal. It wasn't thousands of customers, but it was dozens of customers. And right. like, how do you handle that, right? It really, they weren't shipping it out. They had a third party, you know, that was, you know, doing the fulfillment of it. 
and it was a big mess. And you know, they chose to just handle it and fix it for everybody on their dime, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, what they wanted people to know is like, look, we're here for you. Like, something happened. It was beyond our control and beyond yours. But we want you to have a great experience with your pet. So this is on us because our commitment to to you and you having that experience is is the most important thing. And as mm -hmm. a result of that. They built deeper, that problem caused more depth of relationship to be formed. These people that were taken care of the right way, they, they love them even more now. Like, it's like you couldn't have paid for better yeah. marketing to come out of a bad situation than it I happened see. with them, right? And mm -hmm. so, like, Murphy's Law happens, right? Stuff's going to go wrong. It's how you show up and handle it that really matters more. You know, and mm -hmm. then and then they went back and they've solved the problem, right? They got back to the root cause and they, they but in those moments, it's like, yes, we have to solve the bigger problem, why it's happening, but we have to handle these people. They're upset right now. And they did mm -hmm. both quickly, swiftly, like with grace, with love, with care, compassion. Um, and, you know, I just I love how they showed up. And I'm telling mm -hmm. you, just the amount of like, you know, it's like you go out and you want like consumer generated content, right? Like you want user generated mm -hmm. content of your brand of people loving your product. These people all showed up saying, thank you for the way you handled this. Like th that, you know, like they'll never go anywhere else. Like we love you. Like you couldn't have bought that and had such an authentic set of media and content that came out of it. And that's yeah, not why exactly. they did it. It was just a happy right. accident byproduct of how they showed up. Yeah, I, I get, I get that. That's a great example. It's, uh, making what appeared to be could have been a bad situation and a lot of you know disgruntled customers but kind of turning it around and it's just about handling that and yeah. being quick in handling it i think that's the and main understanding thing. and really understanding like yeah. looking at it through what that person was experiencing right yeah because I've, right. I've seen other companies where it's like look you got to go to the third party like we had nothing to do with that they have insurance they like that's mm. their problem right yeah, yeah and that wasn't the case so yeah it, 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 exactly yeah well, yeah, thanks for sharing that. We get ready to wrap things up. Um, everybody knows, you know, our whole technology landscape is changing so much yep. with the emergence of AI, all of these different technologies that are coming up. Um, what would you say are the biggest trends or changes in e-commerce experience, um, in e-commerce customer experience that you feel are going to be occurring within the next decade or so? Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to see more and more personalization, right? We like started okay. talking about that earlier, but technology, AI, like it gives us even like virtual reality, things like that. It gives us a, a bigger way to personalize the experience that we have, right? Like you can, mm -hmm. you can go on Amazon and you can sh like with your camera, you can see what a product would look like in your room with augmented reality, you know, and, yeah. and it's, it's kind of neat. So it allows customers to have more of what you would have like in an in-store kind of experience in some ways mm -hmm. where without having to go in store. So I think that's a big yeah. deal because that means, especially if you're, uh, if you have a mom and pop store or something like that, you have to be thinking like, well, how am I competing with these other people? And I believe yeah. the answer to that, I know the answer to that is through the experiences that are created in, in working with you. So mm -hmm. like, as we start to see more and more technology, more and more, um, you know, uh, of these tools show up, I think we have to remember that human interaction is an important piece of this relationship, mm -hmm. right? And so while I love AI as tools, we use it extensively in our businesses and we, we teach it to our customers or as tools, I don't think it's a replacement for humans in every case, right? And so mm -hmm. what I like to see, you know, as we all kind of look at our businesses, like how can we use AI to allow us to have more time to interact with our customers? How can we yeah. use these tools to help us have them feel better and get better results from our products, right? I mm -hmm. think that's, in, as we go down in the future, the brands, the companies, the inventors, the, the products uh, that really understand how to make customers feel great and have that experience mm -hmm. and get success, have success with the product or the service, those are gonna be the ones that win. And all the yeah. tech, all the tools out there are a way to help do that bigger, better, faster, and more effectively. Yeah, yeah, very well said, Jason. You know, I, I totally agree. I think there's nothing that's going to replace that direct interaction that you're having with the customer, understanding them, um, providing them service. No matter how much this AI advances, yeah, you can't you can't replace that. Um, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I think we just have to remember that. Um, and I think you know, one, one other thing I'll say is like 
just because technology exists in a certain area doesn't mean you have to use all of it, right? And so yeah, true. I, I just, I don't, I can't stand when I get stuck on a call, uh, like a customer support phone line and I'm press seven. Okay, now press four, now press 32, <laughs> right. now wait, yeah. now do this. And it's like, gosh, like show up for me. I, I invested mm -hmm. in your product, like be there for me somehow. I get that there's a long line, there might be other people, but make it easier for me to want to do business with you. That's all I want, yeah. you know? Yeah, so yeah. just be careful about all these tools. Make sure that you're using them for good, not evil, you know? And yeah. it's, it's helping you get the customer the results they most want. For sure, for sure. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think we'll end on that. And I think we've all been there in those queues and you're hitting three, you're hitting five, you're hitting eight. And uh, it, it, it's annoying and frustrating. But um, yeah, I think brands will, they'll eventually get the picture because, you know, these days there's so many ways for customers to, provide feedback and let them know what's not working. So, uh, you know, hopefully they change things. Amen. Uh, well, Jason, this has been an awesome conversation. I, I love talking to you about this customer experience and um, it's very important, not only for e-commerce businesses, but as you said at the beginning, uh, you know, any business, even, you know, when you were working in the big theater venues, that experience, yeah. it's, it's throughout. So um, it's, uh, it's very important no matter what you're doing. Um, but lastly, as we get ready to close things out, I like to always shift gears just so our audience can get to know you a little bit better. If you don't mind sharing one closing fun fact about yourself that you think we'd be interested to know. I mean, I told you about my, my rock and roll days. Like most people think that's a little crazy, but I think the thing that's most exciting for me now, like I'm in a stage of my life where I, you know, I, I think of retirement as the ability mm -hmm. to choose what you do every day with your life. And so I, right. I've had the good fortune of exiting a bunch of companies I've quote retired and now I'm doing what I love doing. So it's like working with entrepreneurs. And I believe that all of us that are out there that are entrepreneurial, that are entrepreneurs that are building our businesses, building our, our, um, you know, our products and our services. I think that we together, when we do what we do, we do it great and we support one another. Like we will be the ones that change the world and make the world a better yeah. place. So, um, you know, that's why I do what I do. That's why I get up every day and help everybody. And, um, just glad to be here sharing a little bit of stuff. I hope some, some knowledge in here that helps some people. Um, and mm -hmm. you know, if there's anything we can do, just reach out. We'd love to be of service. All right. That's awesome. Great. Thank you for sharing that, Jason. Appreciate that. And of course, if anybody does want to reach out to you and pick your brain anymore and see how they, you can help their business, what's the best way for them to reach yeah, out? Yeah, two, two quick ways. So one, just hit me up at cxformula.com. There's all sorts of information there. You can reach out. And I have a quick gift for your audience, uh, Arlen, um, that they won't find this on okay. my website. If you go to gift, G-I-F-T dot cxformula.com slash ecom, E-C-O-M-M, -M, um, I've got a really awesome PDF take you less than 10 minutes to go through it. And it's going to give you a, 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 a strategy, a question that is going to fundamentally shift the way you think about your business and your customers. Okay. So I want you to go download okay. that, check it out. My email will be there for you. Just if you use it, let me know what you thought. Let me know if it helped you at all. And uh, yeah, go get them. All right. That's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that gift. We'll definitely have the uh, link for that in the show notes awesome. as well as in our YouTube description. So um, it's been awesome talking to you, Jason. Right. Thank you for joining us on the e-commerce marketing podcast. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce marketing podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and share it with everyone you know. Are you looking to take your digital marketing to the next level, but are tired of weeding through countless YouTube videos with unproven and untrusted marketing strategies? Well, we have the answer for you. The More Sales Every Month Online Digital Marketing Course. In this information-packed course, you will learn effective keyword research, link building, content marketing, and much more to attract and convert your site visitors into paying customers. Just go to moresaleseverymonth.com and sign up today for a low one-time fee. In addition to this power-packed course, if you would like to get access to a growing repository of digital marketing articles, PDFs, and eBooks, check out getosi.com resources and opt in to get full access to our library of priceless marketing information to help you take your digital marketing to the next level.